listening to the Critical Hour on Radio Sputnik. I'm Wilmer Leon, joined here by my co-host Garland Nixon. Thank you, Wilmer. The Greenville Post has a story, Ages of Terror, Here's Why Africans Hate France. The history of relations between Paris and its former colonies on the continent explains the the recent spate of anti-French coups. For insight into this, let's turn to our next guest. He holds the John J. and Rebecca Rebecca Moore is Chair of History and African American Studies at the University of Houston. One of the most prolific writers of our time, his latest book is entitled Revolting Capital, Racism and Radicalism in Washington, D.C., 1900 to 2000. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, welcome back. Thank you for inviting me. So the Greenville Post piece continues. Over the past several years, there have been a series of coups in Africa, precisely eight coups in three years. The last one occurred in Gabon. At the time, the media discussed Africa's anger at colonialist France and the pro-French governments that toppled like dominoes. For Paris, that was a real disaster since African countries had only formally escaped from under its wing and were still subordinated to France politically and economically. Moreover, Africa is rich in minerals, oil, gas, gold, and other resources. For example, Niger supplies about 15% of France's uranium needs. And if you could quickly, uh, Dr. Horn, this, this, this statement here about escaping from under the wing and are subordinated to, to France politically and economically, we've touched on this before, but if you could quickly explain the difference between flag independence and freedom. Well, you look need no, you need look no further than what used to be called French West Africa, where a number of nations, including the Senegal, Central African Republic, Gabon, Togo, Congo Brazzaville, Mali, Chad, the list is seemingly endless. Their treasury is basically run out of Paris, and that means that France is a neo-colonial vampire, and when there are attempts to upset that apple cart, for example, with the late Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso or the late Modibo Keita in Mali, somehow they end up being victimized by coup d'etats or otherwise mysteriously slain. And you also need to look no further than what is coming to be recognized as one of the continent's giants. I'm speaking of Algeria on the northern coast of Africa. It was colonized by France from about 1830 to 1962. And then as a result of a bitter armed struggle led by liberation forces, Algeria was able to surge to independence. And as we've said many times on these airwaves, Algeria then established a relationship not only with socialist Cuba, but with the Black Panther Party, which had its main overseas legation in Algiers, the capital of Algeria. And of course, the Black Panther Party being the Black American organization of the left. And so what we see is that when Africans seek to overturn French neocolonialism, France strikes back with a vengeance. Uh, recall what happened in Madagascar, the giant island off the south- southeast coast of Africa, when you had a surge to independence and an overthrow of French colonialism and neocolonialism in 1947. You had the massacre of tens of thousands of Africans. And certainly people in this hemisphere are all too familiar uh, with uh, French oppression and exploitation. Uh, it's no accident that uh, not only do many of us uh, carry these so-called British names, which are an emblem of Anglo-American enslavement, but there are others, such as the surname Malvo, which suggests the fact that France was also active in this continent, particularly in Louisiana, particularly in New Orleans, uh, which had a bloody history. And of course, we need not, I'm sure, make reference in this audience to the Haitian Revolution, 1791 to 1804, which was generated by the shameless exploitation of Africans, particularly from Congo and Senegambia uh, in the Caribbean. So there are many, 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 many reasons 
for Africans to be upset with France, for Africans to be handing France an exit pass, uh, suggesting that they evacuate the continent, or not to mention the Caribbean, sooner rather than later. And uh, this is something that is upsetting the post-World War II engagement and arrangement between U.S. imperialism and France, where the de facto arrangement was that as long as France could keep a lid on its neo-colonies, the United States would allow it to proceed. But with these coups and changes of regime, from the Atlantic to the Red Sea, uh, stretching through uh, Guinea Conakry and Mali and Burkina Faso and Niger, and an irregular change of regime in Chad, uh, it's clear that France could not keep a lid on its neocolonial empire, which is therefore uh, causing tensions uh, with Uncle Sam. And uh, that relationship, by the way, can be defined generally as being a relationship of frenemies, so-called friends or actually enemies, because they're enmeshed in inter-imperialist jousting And it's probably the case that France will come out second best, which will only incur more anger towards Uncle Sam in Paris. And, 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 you know, Dr. Horn, we can even look at the Middle East. You know, I've often, you know, thought about Lebanon, wherein, you know, they supposedly left. But they set up a system where it's like, the head of the government has to be one religion and the prime minister has to be another religion and the head of this other group has to be another religion. So rather than have a true democracy, they set up and uh, might I add the numbers of people in those various religious and religions and ethnicities over the years have changed. So that doesn't even rep- truly represent the numbers in the country. So they've set they leave so-called leave and then they set up a system when they leave that's so dysfunctional that the country can never, ever, um, you know, get its footing. Your thoughts? And, and when they leave, what do they take with them? Money from the government right. treasury. Dr. Horn. Well, yes. And that is not unusual for French neocolonialism. And speaking of antagonisms, we should also keep a careful and close eye on the deteriorating relationship between Turkey, Turkey, Uh, and France, uh, not only over the depredations committed and perpetrated by the Israeli war criminals in historic Palestine and Gaza, but also with regard to their being on opposite sides of the fence, with regard to Armenia, the former Soviet Republic, predominantly Christian, and there hangs a tale because uh, I'm afraid to say that part of the antagonism between Ankara and Paris devolves to religious conflict, that is to say, Muslim versus a Christian. And so you see that as well in the aforementioned Lebanon, where the French have been very close to right-wing Christian forces in Lebanon, who over the decades have committed all manner of war crimes against many of their Muslim neighbors, with hardly a peep coming out of Paris. But at the same time, once again, we must be aware of possible changes that are taking place. And what I'm pointing to, once again, is historic Palestine, where, as noted, you see an emerging rift within the European Union, with Germany on one side and Spain, Ireland, and Belgium on the other, uh, pushing for various forms of sanction or reprimand of the Israeli war criminals, and given the fact that increasingly you see a similar tendency uh, in Asia with regard to Japan and South Korea in particular, uh, trying to put some distance between themselves and Israel, probably that has a lot to do with their markets in predominantly Muslim nations such as Indonesia and Malaysia, and France uh, never won to pass up a commercial opportunity, likely can be persuaded to side with that latter block, particularly because, as you know, more than most, a consumer boycott is emerging uh, in Arab, the Arab world and in Africa, initially targeting McDonald's, Starbucks, and the usual emblems of U.S. imperialism, but also extending to Carrefour, which is a major 
a French uh, retailer. And so uh, we can expect further tensions to erupt, not only between France and Netanyahu, uh, not only between Ankara and Paris, uh, but also with regard to these African and Arab nations who are going to be pushing these uh, consumer boycotts. And they have even more reason to do so because with regard to one of the most devastating setbacks suffered in Africa in recent decades, we can look no further than the overthrow of Qaddafi about a decade or more ago, which had a lot to do with the fact that the regime in Tripoli was passing money, campaign money under the table to then President Sarkozy, who then was able to engineer a NATO bombing campaign uh, led by U.S. imperialism, which led to Qaddafi's death on camera. So there are many, many reasons why Africa is upset uh, with Paris, and that upset is extending increasingly to the Arab world. And as we wrap up, we've got just about two minutes left in this piece. They say on July 31st, 22, the government of Mali demanded that French President Macron abandon the principles of neocolonialism, above all, with regard to economic control over the continent. And when you, when you boil it down to its, to its base elements, when you look at the objectives of the U.S., when you look at the, at the objectives of France and many others, it's simply to extract resources and exploit and repress the indigenous populations. And these coups are the legitimate resistance to oppression. Hamas versus the occupying force of the Zionist state of Israel, Hamas simply wants freedom for the Palestinians. The same way that those in Mali, want, uh, and those in the Congo and, and, and those in Algeria, they want, they want freedom for Algerians and et cetera. Dr. Horn. Well, speaking of natural resources, you need look no further once again than Niger and the uh, rather uh, publicized uranium deposits there, which go to fuel French electricity and turn on the lights in Parisian homes uh, with regard to Gabon and the change of regime there, we know that Total, the French oil giant, was up to its neck with regard to uh, that particular event and still has its claws in the flesh of Gabon. And in terms of assessing the nefarious French role in Africa in particular, I think that you can draw reasonable inferences from the fact that a number of leading global figures have come from their opposition to French exploitation and neocolonialism. I'm thinking of Franz Fanon, roots in the French Caribbean, so-called, who surges to publicity and popularity, fighting against the French in Algeria before the independence of 1962. We've mentioned Thomas Sankara and Burkina Faso. Of course, the Seco Toure of Guinea Conakry. Guinea Conakry, of course, being one of the nations that is replete with bauxite, which is necessary for the production of aluminum. And so when you put all of these elements and ingredients together, you come to see why France is considered to be the vampire of the African continent, uh, sucking the lifeblood out of the continent, and now is getting an appropriate exit path from which it is seeking to escape. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, Thank you so much for your time. Greatly, greatly appreciate that analysis. And we look forward to having you back. Thank you.